Hi students, have a good morning to all. So today we are going to deal with the chapter chemical kinetics. So this chapter comes under the category physical chemistry for plus two. Okay. So mainly we will learn what are the things we learn under this chapter. So I can say uh, for a reaction, if you want to measure the speed or the rate at which a reaction takes place, that is what we are completely dealing in this chapter. Okay, that means the rate of a chemical reaction. Then uh, there are other factors also. For example, the feasibility of a chemical reaction. Feasibility means whether a reaction will happen or not. This is primarily determined or learned from the chapter thermodynamics. Hope you learn. We are learning delta G values and based on that we are determining it. So this chapter mainly deals with the rate of a chemical reaction. Now, one important question comes to your mind, sir, whether it is possible to measure the rate of every chemical reactions? I can say the answer is absolutely no. It is not possible to measure the rate of every chemical reaction. So I can say that the chemical reactions are broadly classified into three. So it is uh, just a rough division. I can say extreme, extreme slow reactions extreme slow reactions this is one category second category is moderate reactions moderate reactions okay moderate reactions and the third category it is extreme fast reactions extreme fast reactions Okay, so just broadly speaking, I uh, classified this into extreme slow reactions, extreme uh, fast reactions and moderate reactions. Now the question here is whether it is possible to measure the rate of a, all the three possible reactions. I say it is no. So which one you, you will be able to measure? I can say you will be able to measure only the moderate reactions out of that. That is moderate reactions. Okay, for extreme slow reactions, it is not possible to measure the rate of a reaction and for extreme fast reactions also, it is not possible to measure the rate. Now the question is why it is like that? Okay, I can take an example, then it becomes very clear for you. So extreme slow reactions, one simple example I can say for that is, okay, extreme slow reactions, example I can say, rusting of ion, rusting of ion. Okay, I hope uh, everybody will have some bicycle uh, in your home, maybe at some stages of your life. Okay, so you know that every bicycle has some part of iron in it or you can say anything that is made up of iron. And you know that iron when in contact with oxygen, okay, Fe2O3 will be formed, that is iron oxide will be formed. Okay, this reaction is an extreme slow reaction. And you know that why I am saying this uh, bicycle example is because you know that when you buy a new bicycle, will it get rusted very fast? Absolutely no. You will keep it for years and years and after some amount of time you can see some rust is formed in that. So that means for that reaction to complete it will take years. So those type of reactions which take huge amount of time to complete, we cannot measure the rate. Can we measure the rate? It is impossible because you need to wait up to a very huge amount of time. Understood. So I can say, I can conclude saying that extreme slow reactions. So extreme slow reactions, you cannot measure the rate. Understood. And next comes the moderate reactions. Or I will go to extreme fast reactions next. I can say for extreme fast reactions also, it is not possible to measure the rate of the reaction. Why? Because extremely fast, one simple example I can say uh, for this one is example I can say all ionic reactions, all ionic reactions. Now one important question comes to your mind, what is ionic reaction? Ionic reaction means reactions involving ions. One simple example we all know, example is uh, I can say Na plus Na plus plus Cl minus giving NaCl. This is a simple ionic reaction where N ions are reacting together to form a product. 
now the importance of this is ions as you know ions always possesses some charge correct whether it can be positive charge or it can be negative charge at the end of the day we can say an ion is basically a charge which is some magnitude correct so here you know that you learned in physics remember in the chapter electrostatics charges they attract or repel each other with a force and that force we say it as electrostatic force or columbic force many, many factors you say and that's magnitude is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 q1 q2 by r square and if you take that value 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 9 into 10 power 9 is a magnitude and i can say that force is extremely big force okay it's a very huge quantity of force so when this reaction happens this force of attraction will act very fast so that it you cannot uh, imagine a device or a method to measure the rate of such a reaction that is the actual reality okay so we understood like for extreme slow reactions and for extreme fast reactions it is not possible to measure the rate of a reaction then comes our major class that is the moderate reactions for which we need to measure then a big question will come so then uh, which all reactions are moderate reactions correct we can generally speaking we can say all organic reactions are generally considered as moderate reactions and whose speed or rate can be measured okay but there are exceptions but generally speaking we can say all uh, organic reactions comes under the class moderate reactions okay so this was the introduction i was expected to give to you because this you need to know before we deal with the different types of the rate of a reaction okay now in the next topic uh, we will deal with how to measure the rate of the reaction okay how scientists started with the idea of measurement of rate of a reaction some idea we need to propose right to measure the rate so how they have come to that that is what we are going to next deal with okay so now we are going to first discuss the concept of how to measure the rate of a reaction for this i want you to imagine some things so that you will understand how they have arrived at this idea okay now uh, how we can thought about is think like a student or a child is having her birthday okay so her father uh, now think that it is not a uh, working day so she resides in her home with her cousins okay so there are something like some two or three cousins are there okay so her father give her some toffees okay maybe say 10 toffees was or uh, five toffees was given to her five considered like that now and her father asked her to distribute it and she started distributing okay so there were three cousins were there she has given one toffee to each one of them in each particular time for example by 11 o'clock she met her first cousin and she gave one toffee to her and by 12 o'clock she gave the second toffee to next cousin and by third three o'clock she gave the third toffee to third cousin okay now here the important thing to remember here is now she has initially five toffees please remember five toffees by 11 o'clock she gave the first toffee to the first cousin now here how will you how you can understand this or how will you measure the change of toffee here you can say that here the decrease in the toffee of my child is equal to what increase in the toffee for that particular person correct so here this decrease is almost equivalent to what increase of that that is one to one say so i can say the decrease in first person decrease in the toffee in the case of first person is equal to the increase in the toffee of the second person and if i take over the time maybe after uh, two hours i know that here also the decrease in the toffee of the first person is equal to what the increase in the toffee of both persons correct if you add that it is matching so i can consider or relate this with a chemical reaction how will you measure the how will you say that for example listen here if you are having a hypothetical reaction a plus b okay and please assume when the reaction has started there was only a and there was only b 
and think about this a it was initially present as some 5 mole and b was also 5 mole over the time the reaction proceeded and you got a new product that is called c and this c when it formed after some time it has some 2 mole now as per the reaction i know that to form this stoichiometric relation 1 is to 1 is to 1 so to form c 1 mole of c i need 1 mole of a and 1 mole of b so after some time if 2 mole of c is formed i can say that how much initially 5 mole was there okay for a 5 mole was there for b also 5 mole was there so from the 5 i need how much mole of a uh, to form 1 mole of C, 1 mole is used to form 1 mole of C. And also since 2 mole of C is formed, 1 more mole of A is used. So I can say that remaining it is 3 mole. And for B also you know, two, uh, initially 1 mole is used to form 1 mole of C. And another 1 mole is used to form another 1 mole. So totally 2 mole. So here also 3 mole is remaining. So in general I can say the rate of decrease in concentration of A and B or a or b is equal to the rate of formation of what c understood so this is the prime concept they have initially used to measure the rate of a reaction now we will come to the formal discussion with the reaction how we will do this okay so generally speaking as per our syllabus we need to measure uh, we need to learn generally two types of rate okay i can say the rate of reaction is generally classified into two so the first one is called average rate of the reaction and the next one is called instantaneous rate of the reaction okay so <clears throat> from the term average rate you can i can say that uh, here you are measuring the rate, uh, concentration change over a period of time for example, uh, you have you started a reaction uh, by morning 10 o'clock and the reaction completed by or a reaction got half completed by 10.30. So you are going to measure the decrease in concentration of reactant or increase in concentration of the product over a time period that is 30 minutes. So that change in concentration by the period of time is considered as my average rate because it is giving you a change over a period of time understood now a question is there if suppose a scientist want to measure the change of the reaction for a particular instance for example 7.1 second and 7.15 second that is very small amount of time that is delta t you can say it's almost an instant so such a type of change if you want to measure that is for a very small instant of time if you want to measure the rate of a reaction we use the concept instantaneous rate of the reaction okay so instantaneous rate will always give you the rate for a particular instant of time okay now which is useful that depends upon the use case the scientists whether they need average rate or instantaneous rate that they can take care of for different applications they may need different types of rate okay but our science provides these two possibilities you can measure the average rate or you could measure the instantaneous rate okay so first now we will discuss in detail what is average rate of the reaction what are its equations and how to deal with different types of equations how to when different types of equations come how will you write average rate this is what first we are going to discuss So listen here so i'm trying to de first uh, define the average rate so consider a reaction a is getting converted to b okay 
So here I can define the average rate of the reaction is equal to decrease in the concentration of A divided by time interval. That means how much time for this? You are taking a time span between T2 to T1. T1 to T2. Okay. So I can say T2 minus T1 is my delta T. And uh, the concentration initially suppose assume like A0 it is changed to A1. So I can say the change in concentration is A1. So always when you say concentration you will put it in square bracket. This you might have learned in the chapter chemical equilibrium. Okay, so I can say concentration of final concentration minus initial concentration and since it is reactant it will be always decreasing in nature. So that is the reason why minus is kept here. So the same thing as we learned now the decrease in concentration of A over that period of time will be equal to what the increase in the concentration of B that is the product. So I can say this rate of the reaction is also equal to what increase increase in concentration of B correct divided by the same time interval divided by the same time interval now how will you write here then it is equal to we can say hypothetically plus delta B by delta T so why plus sign is coming because over a period of time the react uh, the product is keep on increasing so that means that change is a positive change that means the final concentration that is assume like B1 is my final concentration and B0 if it is my initial concentration. So initially no product is there. So I can say B0 initial concentration is 0. Then over a period of time B1 is the product formed. So I can say final B1 minus uh, B1 minus B0 is always a positive. Suppose you are measuring in between a reaction then B0 will also have some value. And B1 will always be more than that. If you take the forward reaction since it is a forward reaction. So I hope you understood how we are writing this. So uh, this equation can be further rewritten actually. How you can rewrite this as per this concept? You can rewrite this as final concentration. We will put a big bracket. Okay. So A2 minus A1. Okay. Divided by T2 minus T1. So this is the way I can rewrite this equation. Also I can rewrite in the case of B also. So you will put a plus sign here. Correct. So B2. Okay. Ah, okay. Sorry. Here I have taken A0. Right. So I will put here A1. And here I will put A0. Okay. Because the assumption was like that. So here also I will take it like that. Final is B1 minus b0 correct divided by time take t2 minus t1 correct so this clearly indicates how to measure the rate of a reaction or the average rate of a reaction now we will deal now i have given here a hypothetical reaction correct a converting to b now we will take actual reaction which is a balanced chemical equation and we'll try to write the rate equation i mean uh, the i will try to find the rate of a reaction okay